Hi everyone, it's Bren here. Welcome to my channel, JJ the Garden Girl. And before we get into this week's garden update, I have got to say to each and every one of you watching, thank you so much for your support. My channel, our channel, has reached a massive milestone this week with over 10,000 people subscribing, which I just cannot get over. It's incredible. I've been posting videos on a consistent basis for over or almost four years and I never would have imagined that it would get to you know this point um, it's so encouraging and I'm really excited to share so many more years of my gardening journey with you all speaking of which let's get stuck into this week's garden update where I will be starting off sharing with you some of my favorite varieties of tomatoes which I am sowing this week. It is so exciting. I'll also be sowing the eggplants, chilies and capsicums. I've actually run out of time again so I will, what I'll do is I'll list them down in the description but I'll go through them in a bit more detail next Friday but just to give you an idea of what's going on here and what I'm getting trying to grow in my little greenhouse and what else we'll just take a look around have a quick look at the worm farm what i've been up to i'm trying to make a few changes here around the garden so yeah it's exciting times four weeks until spring oh i i feel like i'm gonna burst with joy anyway let's take a look now at those tomatoes i was just talking about starting off with tommy toe tomatoes this one is a very popular variety here in Australia. They have large cherry sized fruit. Next are yellow pear. These are sweet and so fun in appearance. I grow these in my garden because my kids love picking them. Next up are Roma and I think this picture says it all. They have such high yield per plant. And I grow these to make tomato sauce because the fruit is firm and it doesn't contain many gelatinous seeds. Next are some Thai pink egg tomatoes. All the others I've mentioned so far are indeterminate so they continue growing upwards but the Thai pink egg is a determinate tomato or bush tomato so it grows to a certain size, it produces all the fruit and they tend to all ripen at the same time. Next up are yellow stuffers. They look very similar to a yellow capsicum and as the name suggests they're great for stuffing. You can roast them in the oven. I like to make a rice and beef mince mix with lots of seasoning. They are delicious. And finally we have Berkeley pink tie dye. These taste amazing. They are incredibly filling and really good just sliced up and place between two slices of bread with some mayonnaise if you like. Really, really full of flavor. And they look incredible too with their metallic green stripes. Yesterday, nature treated us to some lovely warm weather. It was around 22 degrees Celsius and it was such a pleasure to be out here in the garden. But guess what? I'm rugged up again because we are back to the winter temps. But you know what? I actually don't mind the cold weather because it makes physically intense jobs like moving mulch, for example, much easier. I went on a bit of a cardboard hunt this week. So I grabbed some from my local bicycle shop, from my friend and from a garden centre. You know, most companies are more than happy to give away the cardboard. All you have to do is ask. And a big shout out to Kate from Phantom Cycles in Tarmor. I do go in there quite a lot and grab a big stack of empty boxes that I use here in my garden. These boxes that bicycles come in are perfect because they're really large. I'll lay one out and show you. There you go. It's covered about three meters squared. Obviously much quicker than laying out these smaller boxes which do require quite a bit of overlapping. I will have to come in here now and either kind of seal that up, those little gaps, or place a smaller piece of cardboard underneath. 
because if I leave that little section there, which I have done in the past, you think, oh, it'll be fine, but no, it won't. This grass will not die off. And during summertime, you'll see all these little grass shoots popping up amongst your flowers or edibles. Also, don't forget to remove any staples as well as any sticky tape that may be on the boxes. I did also want to mention that there is ink used and apparently glues as well in the construction of these boxes. I know there's a lot of people who don't feel comfortable using those boxes in their garden because of the addition of those two mixtures of chemicals, I guess you'd say. But as long as you're aware of it, you can make your own decision. I personally don't stress out about it too much. Like most of that cardboard now will be used in garden beds where I'm growing flowers. There will be no edibles. So I've got no fear or no concern that they're going to leach into, you know, my food. There's exciting things happening with all of these spring bulbs that I planted back in autumn. I reckon you can see it. Look, the first daffodil. Oh, isn't she a beauty? And I'm bending her petals. Sorry, little daffodil. Let me see. Let's see if you can look beautiful. There you go. There's seven containers here in total, consisting mostly of a mix of varieties of daffodils. However, these two here are two pots of Dutch irises. And I can't see any buds forming yet, but it won't be too long. These are all planted in some plain black pots, which is absolutely fine. However, I did purchase something this week that I think will help jazz them up a bit when I put them out into the garden on proper display. I picked up two of these big rolls of burlap from Vinnie's, my local op shop, for $4 each. I even got a bonus tie with it how cool is that <laughs> i'll use it maybe during summer to tie up my tomatoes i'll cut it up but look at this there's around three or four long strips of this burlap and i was thinking what i can do is use it to wrap around the black pots just to make it look a bit more pretty something like this i'll grab a bit of twine cut it up and make it look a little bit more presentable I was just inside having a drink and I ate this kiwi. I don't like the skin of kiwis. I know you can eat it, but I don't like the texture. So I'm actually going to chuck these into the worm bin. Whoa, it's looking like there's a lot of flies in here. I may be overfeeding it a little bit. I actually noticed the other day that the population of worms was quite low. Unfortunately, it looks like some worms must have died off over winter. Oh, there's a few in there. So actually what I ended up doing the other day was I purchased like a booster box. I'll just show it to you now. It's this one here. They are a little bit pricey, I think, for this pack of around 500. Now I'm not sure if that's 500 worms or a combination of worms and eggs. But this cost me, oh, it was about $30, which, you know, I didn't really want to spend, but I do want to speed up, you know, the population growth in here because I really want to get a lot more worm castings produced for this springtime. This tray of ranunculus has been sitting here for days. I took it out of the greenhouse and I was like, it's not going back in. I'm going to leave it here and I'm going to pop them in the ground. And I still haven't done it yet. But what I did manage to get in a few days ago was this whole section of anemones, which, oh, uh, look at that. I didn't do any plant protection on it, you know, um, sticking twigs or wire mesh over the top. And it looks like the chickens got to it. So I'll have to push that one back in the ground. Oh, that's a bit annoying, but at least it didn't die on me. This area of the garden is looking very messy at the moment because I'm in the process of converting a lot more of the grass section into garden beds. This might give you a giggle. So we recently got a rice cooker and my kids said to me, 
after I made it. I said, what do you think? The first time I used this. And they said, oh, the rice isn't crunchy anymore. <laughs> anyway, I've got this out here because I want to flatten it out and use it to suppress some of the weeds like the way I have here. I think next week I need to not talk about cardboard because as far as I remember the last two or three videos I have mentioned this wonderful resource but you might be getting a bit sick of it. I think it's on my mind a lot because I am creating a lot of new garden beds and cardboard is a really big part of that. Anyway, that is about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really just so chuffed this week. Thanks to all of you. Have a wonderful seven days ahead and happy gardening.